assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi welcome to video class now it's uh, today we are going to discuss the other groups of microorganisms and this is lecture number 2 of the chapter microorganisms and info so today we will discuss algae what are algae algae uh, is a group of simple plants number 1 point it's a group of simple plants and in latin it is called it is called or we can say it means seaweed as far as the shape and size of the algae is concerned they vary in size shape and habitat there is a variation in their size in their shape and in habitat some algae are unicellular as we know what are unicellular and also microscopic some algae are what we can say while others are multicellular when we say multicellular that means they can be few meters long second important thing regarding algae is they don't have stem roots and leaves that means their body is thallus without root stem and leaf but they have chlorophyll they have chlorophyll and they can make their food through photosynthesis they can make their food through photosynthesis because there is a presence of chlorophyll that's why they can make their food through photosynthesis because chlorophyll has ability to trap the solar energy and the examples are seaweeds or we can say spirogyra is like and this is called a spirogyra or second example is we say wool wax it's circular structure so this was the characteristics of algae now let's move to the next group of microorganism that's called fungi so we say fungi are the group of diverse organisms these are the group of diverse organisms they lack chlorophyll and they generally grow in dark 
warm and moist conditions. Most of fungi are saprophytes. Saprophytes. When we say saprophyte, means they depend on dead organic matter. Some fungi are also parasites. When we say parasite, that means they live on other living organisms. Organisms. Fungi are both unicellular as well as multicellular. Some fungi are unicellular, like yeast. Or some are multicellular, like mushroom. And also some examples of fungi are some examples of fungi are mold or we can say bread mold, pencilium. As we know the mushrooms that grow somewhere or we can say they grow on the moist conditions whether on the on the wooden parts of a tree when there is any sort of moistness over there so this was a, uh, some characteristics about fungi now let's move to last group of microorganisms that are called protozoans protozoans or protozoa means first animal first living organism that existed on this earth was protozoan protozoa are unicellular organisms and they are included in a separate kingdom and their kingdom are called protista they are found in ponds lakes rivers sea etc even they they can also be found on damp soil. Protozoa are either saprophytic or parasitic. Protozoa are either saprophytic or parasitic. When we say saprophytic, that means they depend on dead organic matter. And when we say parasitic, that means they depend on other living organisms. Whether they live inside the body of living organism or outside the body of living organism, that means there is ectoparasite and endoparasite. So you have to remember that they are saprophytic or parasitic. They depend on other living organism and they also depend on dead organic matter. As far as the example of protozoa is, that is amoeba, 
paramecium etc so we know the diagram of amoeba it's like this is the diagram of amoeba and as far as the paramecium is concerned you can draw the diagram of paramecium also like it's this is a paramecium so these were the major groups of microorganisms now as far as the chapter is concerned in which we say microorganisms are friend and foe they are both our friends as well as enemies so we will discuss the useful microorganisms number first some micro for example bacteria help us in making certain food items like curd cheese bread pastries so number 1 is lactobacillus lactobacillus bacteria help to make curd from milk so lactobacillus bacteria helps us to make curd from milk number second number second is bread as well as pastries bread as well as pastries for the preparation of bread and pastries yeast is used we can say yeast powder is used so we can say yeast cells we can say yeast cells are used in the baking industries for making breads pastries cakes etc next important point number 3 yeast is also used in day to day household food items like idlis dosa etc these were the south indian dishes they usually prefer to eat such dishes so for that yeast is used next use important use of microorganism is some algae and we can say some algae chlor chlorella and seaweeds 
आर यूज एज फूड एज दे आर रिच सोर्स ऑफ प्रोटीन्स एंड मिनरल्स दिस इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट यूज ऑफ यूजफुल माइक्रो ऑर्गेन्स नेक्स्ट इज आगर जेली लाइक सबस्टेंस आगर आगर वी कॉल इट आगर एंड आगर इट्स अ जेली लाइक सबस्टेंस ओपटेन इट फ्रॉम रेड एलगे इट इज ओपटेन फ्रॉम रेड एलगे एंड इट इज यूज फॉर प्रिपेशन ऑफ वेरियस फूड आइटम्स लाइक वी कैन से आइसक्रीम्स जेलीज एंड पर्डिंग्स बिकॉज इट हेल्प इन द सॉलिडिफिकेशन प्रोसेस एज फार एज द कमर्शियल यूज ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम इज कंसर्न एज वी नो यीस्ट इज यूज फॉर कमर्शियल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ अल्कोहल now as far as the commercial use of micro organism is concern yeast is used for commercial production of alcohol beer wine and acetic acid even some bacteria are used in the production of tea are used in the production of tea so these were the useful microorganisms as far as the medicinal use of microorganism is concerned microorganisms also have medicinal use number first medicinal use of microorganism is antibiotic as we know when we fall ill the doctors give us some antibiotics or whether capsules or injections and the medicine produced by living organisms or we can say the question here is what are antibiotics the medicines produced by living organisms whether from bacteria from fungi which kill or stop the growth of the disease causing microorganisms present in our body are called antibiotics so it is one of the medicinal use of microorganisms so antibiotics are the medicines which is produced by living organism such as bacteria fungi which kill or stop the growth of disease causing microorganisms so 
so this is one of the medicinal use of microorganisms now as far as the other use of microorganism is concerned microorganisms have are very useful for us in many ways so the as far as the commercial use of microorganism which we have already discussed and this is the medicinal use of microorganisms and even microorganisms are used in the production of vaccines number second we can say micro organisms are used in the production of vaccines which protect human as well as animals from various diseases second important use of micro next important use of microorganism is microorganisms helps in increasing soil fertility for example they fix the atmospheric nitrogen and convert them into nitrogenous compounds whether nitrate and nitrate and which gets added into the soil and with that the fertility of the soil increases next is microorganisms helps in cleaning the environment by decomposing dead organic wastes of plants and animals some other uses of microorganism if we will discuss some bacteria are used in leather and jute industries some bacteria also help in generating biogas so these were the useful microorganisms that helps us in various ways whether their use are for medicine medicinal purpose whether for commercial purpose but as far as the microorganisms are concerned they are both useful for us and there are some harmful effects of microorganisms also we will discuss that in next lecture so today uh, we will conclude uh, today's lecture with useful microorganism which we have discussed already i hope you have understood today's lecture so in next lecture we will discuss harmful use of microorganisms that's all for today yamanullah